So that would be treason. This is part two. My phone got too hot and turned off. That would be treason. Um, there's no such thing as a constitutional extremist. If you're looking for that, that's a lawyer, an attorney, or your president. That's your president. <laughs> Those are the people that fight for your rights. So, what the Saudi princess would be wearing is, I look to unban the burqa because the truth is, people are politically afraid of it in America. It never really did anything to anybody in America. It might have been used as part of the war in the Middle East. That's understandable. It's war. They say there are no rules in love and war. Well, we're going to do anything we can to beat you because you're over here and we're at war with you, so that's understandable. There was never anything in America. So it was banned all throughout the Western world and in America. And in America, we have freedom to practice religion. So there are no burqa crimes that I know of in America ever happening. Um, there's no pandemic, no epidemic, no burqa anything. What we do have are, over the past decade, 150,000 combined uns unsolved crimes between homicides, murders, and missing people. And we banned the burqa and those didn't go away. So um, the identity problem in America is the unsolved crime, and those are being committed by people who aren't wearing burqas. So, until burqa correlates with crime or danger, some type of safety issue, etc., in America, it hasn't. Um, and since we are not at war with Islam and never will be, as professed by Barack Hussein Obama, I unbanned the burqa because there was no reason to ban it unless you were at war with the religion. So their freedom to practice their religion will not be infringed upon. <laughs> until and unless these, um, I, you could call it exigent, exigent, emergent, um, some type of criminal um, circumstance arises. Okay, well, that gives us reason now. Okay, all the burqa wearing women got together. You know that they have freedom here anyway, and a lot of them come here so they don't have to wear it, but it's just a choice and option given to them still because there was never a reason to remove it. So the Saudi princess in this marriage would be wearing a burqa. It also sends a strong message to the world and the United States that until this is associated with crime, it's a part of this religion. And that's mostly our concern in our own country, okay? Should only be a concern in our own country. So she can wear a burqa. Now, it can be green and white, the color of the, she's a Saudi princess, the color of the Saudi kingdom's flag. It could be any color. That's up to her. I prefer a burqa. And what should be inscribed on it, an inscription, is the Shahada and Allahu Akbar. She can wear black. She can wear green. She can have purple. Different colors. The most beautiful one she could ever think of. It's a marriage burqa. Traditionally, marriage in America, they almost wear something like a burqa. It's similar. She got this big dress on. It's a beautiful dress. And they have a veil over top of their head. And you can't see her until you lift it up. And there she is. She under there somewhere? There she is. So there's a commonality between them already. Um, but that would be what the Saudi princess would wear. So if you can imagine this, that would be the marriage. Now, who would be present? The actual Pope, the real Caliph, the real Boot, the real Dalai Lama, a real Hindu leader, a real Jewish rabbi. And of course, her family would be the Saudi royal family um, and some other representatives. That's how you get married. That's how an American president and a Saudi princess gets married. That's what it looks like, too. So all the religious holy books could be there. It would be the same thing that I would imagine for peace. This is me. This is America marrying Islam, not just any Muslim, a royal member, an al Saud, a bin Salman, or bint Salman. So who's not married over there? Hmm? I know Amira is. What about Hassa? Is Hassa married? So this presidency that I create, um, 
Remember, it's just a schizophrenic delusion, and I live in a fantasy world, and those are diseases. But it's the most amazing thing anybody's ever heard of and seen. And now, <laughs> when it's done, who is it? Is it Muhammad's sister? Hmm? He'll be the king. It's a great way to start off a future. So let's end the wars. Do uh, you have a sister? <laughs> Here's world peace. Let's do this. Have a caliph. Be present. Maybe I'll marry uh, a sister. And that's what the marriage will look like. And we have a connection for as long as... Even if, you know, now typically they don't like to get divorced, and I don't see why we would, because I would treat her very well, but you never know how people's dynamics are. But it'd be great politics for the world, too. Like everything else is that I mention. Um, so he'll be king for 40 years. 30, 40, 50 years. That's a great way to start off your relationship with America. Um, and he's getting ready to become the king. And we're about the same age, 35, 36. I mean, that's everlasting history, too. Well, one of our presidents... Well, gee, look which president it was. And look at what they look... Here's what they looked like. Here were their appearances during this marriage. He's our First Amendment. He's like, well, I don't have a problem with this. Well, we have all of them here. They can freely practice. That's strongly... Strongly practice, too. I mean, you can wear... I wear it. You can wear Allahu Akbar on your shirt in Arabic writing or English. It doesn't mean... And the problem is... America's at war with Islam and wouldn't admit it. Um, otherwise, it's not against our laws and we should wear that and you could wear it openly and around in Islamic calligraphy or in American English. Allahu Akbar. God, Allah is greatest. God is greatest. And that's the problem and that's a part of my unity in the world is they are claiming that Allah and God are different, that the eternal is different, that all these all-powerful essences at the center of monotheism that are exactly the same are somehow different because they had a different messenger or prophet that had a slightly different message, etc. Um, they're all the same. So what we do is we abide by one another's laws. This isn't that hard to figure out. So when you come to America, we have American laws, and then I'll make it better for Islam here too, um, until and unless we can associate it with crime. There's no reason to even ban the burqa. And um, according to Stockton, Honor killings are okay under a marriage contract. And you can just remove rights through a signature without due process. So, I mean, we could bring back Islam in the city of Stockton, in the state of California, the county of San Joaquin, if this is what they uphold and acknowledge as legitimate factors of law and functions of our due process, um, we can bring back the honor killing. I mean, we could have full-blown Islam in America. This is what the Supreme Court... I mean, the judges are supposed to be responsible for ordaining and establishing these inferior courts. Some of these are mental health courts. And then I guess that's considered a court because they can remove rights. Is that considered due process? Because all I do is sign a signature in behavioral health and I lose my rights for following the law to begin with. So we can bring back Islam full in America, full-blown. Um, and it'd be nice to have a Saudi royal member, a female, at my side and be the first lady. This is magnanimous. There's no equivalent to what goes on in this guy's head. Um, that'd be so powerful. Um, the relationship that's drawn between Islam, the Saudi Kingdom, and America, we're already allies. Let's end the war and make it even stronger. It's good for people. What's inside people, that's all politics can do. Now, if we keep... There's conflict, and we say bad things about each other. Our people watch the news, and that's what they start thinking about our respective countries and people. And you have a small groups that go, well, I don't care, I still like Americans, or I still like Saudis, and Islam's okay with me. But what you do with politics is you affect people. So it's good to have positive politics, and those would be powerfully positive politics. So there would be America represented in a person, and there would be the Saudi Kingdom represented in a woman. And also the message that this thing's not banned until I 